In this video, I'm gonna be showing you the best FPV gear you should be buying and flying in 2023. I made a video like this back in 2022, but there's been a ton of advancements since then, so I thought I'd make an updated current version for this year. My name is Danny McGee, and I am a filmmaker and FPV pilot who's been flying professionally for about four years now. I get to travel to so many amazing places because of FPV, and it's honestly completely changed how I run my business. I was in the filmmaking world before, but learning FPV was honestly one of the best moves that I've ever made. Whether you're just flying for fun or it's what you do every single day, I just wanna show you the exact gear that I use. And I'll just kinda of give you my honest thoughts on everything to hopefully make your buying decisions way easier. And let me tell you, gear has come a long freaking way from the time that I started. Back when I started, it was only analog, which is basically the equivalent of taking a giant like 1970s TV and just sticking it in front of your face and flying kind of like half blind. I know some people still fly analog and I freaking respect the hell out of you. I don't know how you do what you do. But nowadays I fly exclusively on DJI FPV digital systems. So all the gear that I'll be talking about is part of that system. I just don't wanna be recommending gear that's gonna be outdated in a couple years. So I wanted to give you guys recommendations for gear that you're gonna be able to fly for a really long time. And DJI has come out with a couple of their own FPV drones as well, the DJI FPV V1 and then the DJI Avada. And I'll talk about each one of those a little bit later on in the video. I really like one of them and I really don't like the other, but I'll explain that later on in the video. So as they say on YouTube, let's freaking hop into it. Also apologies if you guys hear cheeping in the background, we're fostering five ducks um, that got abandoned by their mom. Um, just for a few months until they fly away. I'll actually just show you guys one of them now. This is little Peep. Let's see if we can get focused, there he is. So yeah, these dudes are just uh, just a couple weeks old and they're very chirpy. <laughs> Look at that, he's so cute. So to start off, let's talk about the controller. The controller that I use and recommend is the DJI FPV Controller 2. In my last video, I recommended this controller, <sighs> which is literally <laughs> super dusty because I haven't used it in a while. But since then, DJI has released this new one. And the reason that I recommended this one is just because how easy it is to link up to the rest of the system, and that's the same for this one. The new one is just an updated version with some added features and a way smaller footprint. This old one is a freaking brick. You could actually, like, pretty sure defend yourself with this and use it as a weapon if someone was attacking you. <laughs> the new one is a more PlayStation-y style, which I love. Now, there are a couple other remotes that people do use. The first one is the Tango 2, which uses a crossfire system, which is basically just a different communication protocol. And then some people use remotes that are on the ELRS communication protocol system, which you don't really need to worry about. But an example of one of those remotes is like the Commando 8 from iFlight. Both systems are definitely viable options, but the reason that I recommend this one is just because of how simple it is to set up. It just links perfectly with all the other components super easily. One of the main challenges and reasons people quit FPV is just because it can get super complicated super quickly, but DJI honestly has just really streamlined that process over the last few years. By the way, links to everything can be found down in the description below. Okay, now let's move on to the goggles. And for goggles, you either wanna be flying the DJI FPV Goggles V2 or the DJI Goggles 2. I have no idea who's on the naming committee for DJI, but these are the V2 goggles. And then these are the DJI Goggles 2. The DJI Goggles V2 came out in 2021 and these ones came out more recently in 2022. The V2s can be found anywhere from 350 to 450 USD and the new Goggles 2 come in right at like 650. You would assume that the new ones are better in every single way, but that's not actually the case. So I kind of want to just take a second to talk about the differences. The new ones, in my opinion, are way better to fly with. They have an OLED screen, have better resolution, and are smaller and easy to travel with. But the V2s actually have a bit of a bigger screen and a better refresh rate. So for people who are racing, tend to go with the V2s because they are a tiny little fraction of a second faster. So to be honest, if you are on a little bit of a tighter budget, I'm not sure if the extra $250 is justified to go with the goggles too. So the V2s are a really good option, but if you do have a little bit of cash to spare, I'd recommend going with the goggles too. Apologies for the interruption, but before we go any further, I need to thank the sponsor of today's video, Artlist. If you've never heard of them before, Artlist is a massive library of resources 
services for filmmakers and videographers. They have everything from music to sound effects to stock footage, templates and motion graphics, plugins, and even different apps that can help you create videos. We actually use them a ton in this particular video. To start off, all of the background tracks are from Artlist. They have a huge library of music all the way from chill background music to more intense songs like the one at the beginning. We also used Artlist sound effects to help with kind of just building the ambiance of everything as well. One of the coolest things about Artlist is they have a ton of different plans depending on what you specifically need. Stock footage or stock footage in templates, or you can bundle it all together in one big plan called Artlist Max. They also have varying plans depending on if you want to use it just for social media or unlimited use for any type of project. This allows you to only pay for what you need. So if you think that's something that can help you, go ahead and start the free trial just to see if it's something that can enhance your workflow. I'll leave a link down below and when you use that link, you get an additional two free months. Again, thank you Artlist for sponsoring this video. I could not make these videos without my sponsors. Now let's get back to the video. Next thing I want to talk about is drones. And you'll notice that I have a ton of different sized drones. And that's because with FPV, different sized drones are better for different purposes. Size matters not. Look at me. Just me by my size, do you? So I'm going to run through all the drones that I have at various sizes and then also talk a little bit about the air units inside. You'll notice most of the quads that I have are pre-built and ready to fly, which is definitely what I recommend if you're someone who's just trying to get cool shots. You can get a little bit better performance if you custom build quads, but it's super time consuming. And odds are, if you're watching this video, you're just kind of in it to film as opposed to race or something like that. When you're ordering drones, you'll typically realize that there's two different air unit options to choose from. One is the O3 air unit, which looks like this. And then let me grab one of my old quads. The other one is the original air unit right here um, that also looks really similar to the Cadex air unit. And basically that's the camera that connects to your goggles. Both of them have the same compatibility. So if you're buying new, I'd recommend going with the O3 air unit. The first drone I wanna talk about is my number one pick for beginners, which is actually this seven inch naked black magic Cinelifter. Just kidding, but I just got this and I'm super stoked to freaking test it out. My actual best pick for beginners is the Avada. Like I said before, a massive hurdle for people to get into FPV is just how complicated it is to set everything up, but the Avada takes all the guesswork out of that and you can just buy it as a kit, get everything linked up and get flying right away. On top of that, the Avada is a great frame to learn on because as you can whoops, kind of see, it's super durable. I've crashed Avadas a ton of times. I've never had one of them break and it does have a decent amount of power. So if you do want to try some more freestyle stuff, you can do it with this. It also has a really good battery life so you can practice flying longer. I recently released a video where my friend who had never flown an FPV drone before brought his Avada over and I went through the whole setup process and actually timed how fast I could set it up and then he went out and did his first flight. So if you wanna check that video out, link is right here. And I actually still use the Avada a ton for my FPV hotel fly throughs because the range and battery life is super solid and I just put a Hero 11 on top. Next up, I wanna go over my top five inch pick which is the Nazgul 5 from iFlight. You'll notice all of my pre-built quads are from iFlight because honestly, I've had a great experience with them. They have a ton of different models and their customer service is really good. But this drone is a really good hybrid drone. It's pretty solid at mountain surfing. You can get pretty technical with it. You can hit some gaps with it and it's just a good frame. If you're looking for something to upgrade from the Avada 2, this is a great option. The DJI pre-built version of this drone is the original DJI FPV, which I wouldn't recommend mainly because it's not super durable. Um, I've seen people crash those and the arms are just pretty flimsy and they don't handle near as well as something like this five inch quad. And with the pre-built iFlight quads, it's the same binding process. Moving on to long range quads. This is the honestly probably the main drone that I fly here in Hawaii which is the Chimera 7. This drone is freaking awesome because it handles pretty well actually, um, but also because it's a bigger frame, you can go really, really far with it. A lot of the limitations of long range FPV is just the battery life, but just since it's a bigger quad, you can put a bigger battery on it, you can go for longer. And if you're willing to take that while sacrificing a little bit of freestyle handling, this is the drone for you. Next drone I wanna talk about is on the opposite side of the spectrum, this tiny Defender 25 for my flight as well. I got this drone specifically to fly in places where a lot of these other drones aren't legal. For example, like over crowds or over roads. I freaking love this thing. It's so small, handles really well, and it stays below 250 grams if you use the O3 area in it, which like I said, the footage is good enough on there, 
But I had my GoPro Hero 11 stripped down and turned into this tiny little naked setup. Um, and this basically goes on here and it's just a super light micro setup. As always, links are down in the description. But that's it for drones, let's hop into cameras. If you made it this far, you know how FPV works. You take a drone, you take an action camera, put it on top and that is what you record with. Until the new O3 air unit came around, this was really the only way to get really solid footage out of the drone itself. Original air unit footage looked super poopy. <laughs> and even with the O3 air unit, you can get solid enough footage um, but it's definitely not up to par with GoPro, so I still always fly with the GoPro. And my top recommendation for which GoPro to use is basically whatever new one they've come out with. Right now, that's the Hero 11, which, Luke, if you could animate a levitating Hero 11 here. I actually don't have one right now because I stripped it down to make my naked camera for my micro drone. But the Hero 9 and 10 are also really solid as well. That's the one that I was just showing you. Um, so if you're on a little bit more of a budget, you can definitely use those cameras and still get a really awesome image out of them. I have another video covering all the best filming settings. So if you wanna check that out after this video, I'll leave a link right here, um, just to kind of maximize the image that you can get out of your GoPro. The last thing that I wanna talk about is batteries. So for most of my quads, I fly on these 1500 milliamp hour batteries. I just picked these up from Amazon and they've actually worked out super well. This is mainly for my five inch drones. And then when I'm flying my Chimera, I use this bigger battery, it's a 3300 milliamp hour. Like I said, I'll leave links down in the description, but this just gives me a lot more battery life because the drone is bigger, so it needs a bigger battery. So that's about it for all the gear that I use and fly on a daily basis. I did have something that I wanted to tell you guys about, which is an exciting new project that I'm working on, which is a YouTube channel called Relaxing FPV, which is basically just a YouTube channel with these hour long cinematic FPV videos with peaceful music on it that you can throw on your TV when you're working or editing or studying. It's just something cool to have playing in the background. I'm actually actively looking for new country slash locations. So if you are an FPV pilot and you think you have enough footage from any certain location to put together a video, just send me a DM on Instagram. I'll leave my handle right here. And I'd love to see your footage. It's honestly been a ton of work putting together those videos and just starting to build that channel. Um, so if you would head over there and just drop a comment or something, say what's up, maybe subscribe if you want. It would mean a lot to me. I'll put another link right here. But that about does it for this video. Definitely let me know if you have any questions down in the comments or if you'd like to see more videos like this about the gear that I use. But that's it, thank you guys for watching. Here is a super cute picture of a duck. Peace. Wow.